Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna be removing these tarps from our fig trees. This is uh, basically de-winterizing my fig trees. And today is March 8th. I'm gonna make that clear. And the reason why we're doing this now, because our, our average last frost is May 1st. But the reason I wanna do this now is because it's really warm. Our, our winter was quite mild. Uh, the 10 day forecast looking forward, so that puts us into the 18th of March, is actually really warm. It doesn't drop even below 40, I think. Uh, we're gonna have an early spring here, definitely. Uh, the ground's warming up, it hasn't been frozen quite some time. Uh, you know, ideally you guys got your, your, uh, your spring crops in the ground or close to it. Uh, and what I want out of this, these figs this year, specifically, is to get some decent production out of these in-ground trees. And the whole reason why we cut them back to 6 to 12 inches, cover them with straw, cover them with these tarps, is to ensure that we had a decent harvest this year. I didn't know what the winter was gonna look like. We didn't even really drop below, I think, 14 degrees, I think it was. So uh, that's really a mild winter here. When we average probably every other year or even every year, pretty darn close to zero degrees Fahrenheit, only seeing 14 is really nothing. And if I had some more mature in-ground trees uh, and I didn't cut them back, you would see just phenomenal growth this year, phenomenal uh, production. Uh, they would be even earlier this year. I mean, it would just be, the this would be the craziest fig year I've ever experienced. Um, so it's a shame that I'm gonna miss out on that. But because we went through this, this whole process here of cutting them all back and covering them, I needed to guarantee myself a crop. And that's essentially all I've done. And um, I don't have any regrets because who knows if this was gonna happen, you know, who really thought, who could have thought, who could have predicted that this was gonna happen. Um, also, these trees, uh, some of them are quite young. And when you just plant a fig tree in the ground for the first year, they really don't do well. Um, they just have this weird thing where they almost always die back to the ground completely, without, a, without exception. There's no, there's no hardy variety. The first year you put a tree in the ground, if it sees you know, somewhere around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, it will die all the way to the ground. They're just not hardy enough. And one of the things that I have been kind of uh, really thinking about recently with these hard, like the hardiness of these trees and why some are hardier and some aren't, uh, really has to do with the water. And I think that's a big thing is that in our younger, our younger years of these fig trees, they uptake a lot of water and therefore they, uh, they're not really ready for a frost in the, in the fall. So a fall frost comes in pretty early most of the time. They don't have the most lignified growth because they've spent a lot of their first year just growing and growing. Um, and therefore, they just get hit, zapped by a frost and it's, it's kind of over at that point from the fall. You know, it's not even really the winter time that, that does them in. Um, and I have a feeling we're gonna see some of these younger trees that did that. You know, it wasn't the 14 degree low that hit these trees. It was probably the 20 degree low that I saw a couple nights we saw a 22, a 21, and a 20 sometime in November after I took all these cuttings. Around the same time, everything went dormant, everything got hit by that frost. You know, I wanted them to get hit by that frost because then they're gonna go dormant, I'm gonna be able to take cuttings. But some of these really young trees probably got some damage at that point. And, uh, you know, as a result, they're, they're just not gonna be alive right now when I unveil this. So I want to show you guys the results of all this and what had really happened and you know what are my uh, thoughts on this whole thing for next year. You know some of these trees are actually quite, they look quite good. Uh, I see no damage on this tree. Now what I'm doing by the way 
in addition to just taking off these tarps because it's not enough to just take off a tarp is I need to come in here and take this straw off. This straw and any mulch is gonna cool down the soil. These leaves, if you see any leaves in here, um, the whole idea of taking off this tarp so soon, okay, the reason we could wait until May, right? I don't have to do this in, in March, okay? I could wait quite some time um, and be safe, right? Because there's still a potential for frost. But the idea here with these in-ground figs is that I, I really want them to wake up as soon as possible. Maybe not in the month of March. The idea and the goal is to get them to wake up and be pretty active. Um, this guy I thought was budding out, but no. Nope. So I want them to be active by about April 15th here, about 15 days before our average last frost for just about anybody, wherever you guys are, 15 days before, that's the date that you really want these things to be budding out and starting their growth. The same thing with the trees on the patio. Um, that's really gonna give them the longest season possible. Yes, there is a 15 day window when you could have some potential frost, but it's very easy to just get these tarps out here again and lay them over these things if there is a potential for frost after they've already budded out. So I'm not really worried about the extra work or the fact that they could be injured in some way. Now, some of you guys are wrapping your tree, right? Um, some of you guys just have a big in-ground tree and you wrap it every year. Um, the idea with that is the same thing as this in that we don't wanna keep this tarp on too soon because if it's wet under here, maybe you didn't, uh, do your wrapping correctly and you have you actually have some moisture that's trapped underneath the tarps this has been very dry the the straw here is extremely dry and any of that moisture that was trapped underneath is actually being absorbed by the straw therefore i don't have any um mold on these trees i shouldn't have any mold we're gonna find out but uh that's what you kind of need to watch out for with your trees that you've wrapped is that you need to take this tarp off because you don't want the temperatures to get so warm. Today's in the 60s, guys. Tomorrow's gonna be 70. Uh, we're not dropping below 40. It's gonna be like it's spring here. And if you have too many spring days with that tarp on and it's trapping in all that air and it's just getting warm and all that moisture's in there, you are gonna mold your tree your tree is gonna, you're gonna unveil it and you're gonna see it's killed all the way down to the base and it's gonna have mold on it. Um, so that's not what you want and that's a big reason why we gotta get this off now or at least some point in this, it like before frost because if you don't take this off before frost by the time, or before the, the first frost, if you don't take it off by let's say in my area by May 1st, you're probably gonna regret it. Now the other nice point here with the, with the wrapping your tree, okay, before I move on to this, is that there's no real, you know, re-wrapping it once you unwrap it, right? So if the tree wakes up, let's say by, you know, uh, April 15th, and then we get a potential frost, I can just lay a tarp over top of this, no problem. It may be a bit more difficult for you guys to cover a tree that's, you know, the size of me and my wingspan, right? So uh, it's just something that you're gonna have to kind of really eye and pay attention to. There's a nice little balance there, right? We want it to wake up earlier, but we don't want it to get hit by a late frost. So, you know, we're kind of playing with fire in a way, but this all pays off the earlier these trees wake up. And the, the way that we can wake them up earlier, as I was sort of getting to, is by warming up the soil. Removing this straw, because the straw is cooling down the soil, I'm now exposing the soil to the sunlight, and also we're not trapping in those temperatures. The, this straw does such a great job of keeping the soil temperatures consistent. Um, I have one layer of rock here that I'll show you guys. As a lot of you know that you know, have been following along, that's literally it, that's all I have on top of these fig trees is some stone, some of these cinder blocks, and then also the, uh, the rock. Excuse me, guys. So I'm gonna keep unveiling this. I think we've talked enough, and then I'll show you guys some of the results. 
So far, I'm not seeing any damage. I am seeing some moisture right here along the bark on that tree. So that's unusual because I would have expected most of this to be completely dry underneath the tarp. I'm actually seeing like no damage, which is really shocking to me right now. All right. I think that's a pretty decent, look at this. Oh, all right, so we do have some moisture down here by the soil. I've got a lot of worms I'm seeing right now as I've unveiled that mulch. I'm sure that the worms have come in here and dropped a lot of castings, probably ate a lot of this organic material that was on the top of the soil. They had complete darkness, a good amount of material to eat from. Let me just unveil some of these smaller trees here that probably have some damage on them, or at least I would expect some sort of damage. I'm not seeing any on that one. And as I said, I think the damage didn't come from this method, but instead a frost that came in in the fall. This, this tree definitely has a little bit of damage on it. This one here is completely fine. <laughs> this, <laughs> this little tree. Wow, everything is just really completely okay. So the method works, okay? That's, that's a fact. Um, I've known that before I even started doing this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Um, Now, there is some trees on the other side of the yard I did get to look at uh, over there by the greenhouse. And those are very small and they did take some damage. So this, even though this stuff here looks like perfect, <laughs> I mean, this is like as good as it gets. Look at these young trees here. Actually, here's some damage. So there you go, there is something, I guess. Maybe that was dead before. But even this really weak young trees that I just, I really stuck a cutting in the ground is what this is. I stuck a number of cuttings in the ground, cut them back, all that new growth that they formed and then covered them. They're totally fine. Uh, this tree right here, you can barely even see this guy right here is totally fine. <laughs> Here's a detrasis place, no damage. This, I don't know what this is. I have to look at the tag, wherever that is. Here it is. This is Negra de Agde. And this has some damage up here. So, you know, that is from the fall, I would assume. I think it's pretty safe to assume that. There's a little bit of damage up here on this. It's just, you know, a little bit of desiccation on this uh, Colonel Littman's. Otherwise, this thing's completely damage free. And I'm sure if I went down the board here, let's see what's underneath this. This is a white Madeira that I'm not really sure is even alive. I'm gonna be honest. This one might be dead. This, was an, this one had an extremely small stem to it. It just never really transplanted well in this bed. Here's another one. Is this thing alive? You can see how moist that is, by the way. See how much moisture got trapped in here. But this is alive. This is 100% alive. You can see the cutting that originally we rooted right here and it put out this new growth, chopped back that new growth right there. Here's a St. Martin. No damage. Here's an older tree. This is a six-year-old black Madeira KK that we chopped back. It's got some damage at the tips. Uh, other than that, it's fine. Here is a very tall, this tree is like over a foot high already of black Sadar. 
and I'm not seeing very, uh, very much damage at all, if any. I'm sure it's possible. And then, uh, yeah, another tree, no damage. So I think this method really works. Here's a tree that, by the way, we decided as an experiment not to cover this with straw, just the tarp, and see what would happen. And there's no damage on this. This is a Black Beauty 10 that I'm actually gonna be digging up. You can see the growth over here, however, is a little weaker, a little younger, and that's dead on that particular cutting. So you can see that the difference in the age and the width and the diameter of the growth probably has something to do with the, uh, the fall and that frost that came in the fall. Now I do wanna show you guys really quickly one tree that I didn't leave, I just completely neglected it, did not protect this tree. And I wanna see, with no protection on it, if it is alive. And it does look to be alive. So this winter was just so mild. You can see that green in there. So the cambium is showing uh, lots of growth, or lots of uh, living material there. So it really, if I had just not protected any of these trees uh, that were older, I should say, I wanna, yeah, you gotta be careful with that statement because if they're young, you know, one-year-old trees that you just stuck in the ground, I wanna show you one over here because I don't think my argument really is being made with all these young trees. They're all still alive is that we do, we, even with this mild winter, we really needed to protect these trees. All right, so here's one right here. And I would be willing to bet there is some damage on here. It looks like down in here, it's alive. Here's another one. This is the one I saw where you can see the growth that it took in the fall um, knocked this tree all the way back to a pretty low height. In fact, it may have to re-sprout from the soil. And uh, that just is what it is. The way you can tell, guys, if your tree is dead, just do the scratch test. It's pretty obvious from my eye, just an experience, that this is not alive, this branch. Uh, there's no green in here. It's all dried up. And that's... Actually, I'm seeing some green, it looks like, towards where I broke it off. So this tree is gonna be okay, it's gonna live. And I'd be shocked if I lost any trees, because I'm gonna be honest, I have, in my six years of growing figs, I've literally never lost a tree uh, to the cold that was in the ground, uh, which is insane. I mean, people you know, really worry about these things. Even these really small trees, which this is really the first year, well, not really, but this is the first year I really mass planted these very young trees. Um, you know, the, that would have, my record of not killing a tree would have been changed. I would have lost some trees. But a lot of the times they're so resilient, guys. They just come back from a lower point below the soil. You bury a couple nodes, even if the soil is in a mound. And that's the other point I wanna make here, guys, is that with all these trees, in addition to the rocks and removing the, the, the straw, removing these tarps, we've got them in mounts. And we're trying to increase the soil temperatures here dramatically so that we can have a better start to our season. And yeah, I think you just guys will be amazed at the amount of heat that you can give these trees you know, early on in the season, it really pays off. Even if you guys live in somewhere, you know, like California and Arizona, there's maybe a couple weeks or a month or so that this can kind of pay off to give you a more productive, earlier fig season. Um, just getting this soil temperature thing sort of sorted out and you'll be all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little preview here of what's to come. I gotta do more tarps and we're gonna kind of call it a day. We'll talk to everyone.